a brand new ITL, and we're going to get some expertise, real expertise, on the art of mastering. You know where you're at. It's Pensado's Place. Hey, everybody. Glad to have you with us this week. It's going to be an extra special week for me. And uh, I'm convinced it'll be an extra special one for you. How you doing, Herbert? Good, man. How about you? Oh, man. You know, living the dream. What you, can I say? You've been busy. Yeah. What can I say? Yeah. Man, excellent management you have. Excellent management. <laughs> excellent management. <laughs> but I want to give a no shout out to Leo Saramago. Uh, Leo's uh, a fellow compatriot mixer and just uh, needed a little encouragement. So uh, uh, hang in there, buddy. Everything's going to be great. I can't believe you just did that. Why? I well, like him. No, because in my shout outs, I had Leo as well, too. Oh, you did? And a few others, yeah, I for know. different reasons. Yeah. It's just, cool it guy. just tore my heart up. But uh, And then Ali is still plugging away. Absolutely. Uh, over in, uh, where is Ali? Pakistan? Yep. Yeah, so, uh, and Bill Kamet sent me a nice message. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, let's move on along. I want to get to Dave as quick as we can. All right, then um, let's do what we usually do, folks. Uh, I think you know the drill. God knows you're in touch with us, so you know where to get in touch with us. But just in case you don't, it's up on the screen right now. You got hit us at our Twitter handle, obviously our YouTube page and Facebook, where you talk to us pretty frequently. So we're happy about that. Always, we're uh, happy to have our strategic buddies who work with us so closely and are great. Vintage King is in the house. Round of applause for Vintage King. Woo! Whoa. Oh, that's good. It was audio applause. It was <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Um, in the chat room. Who's in the chat room? We have got Alex in the chat room. Oh, I think good. we just threw this page up. So you Alex. guys know Alex, and I see you're in the chat room. Actually, one of the comments that we just saw was somebody was so excited they thought they just did number one. <laughs> so, so that was well, kind of funny. Now I see why you didn't want me to mention it, because you were going to use it. Absolutely. He's hoarding the good material for himself, <laughs> Drew. See, I, clean it, I clean it up. You know, I know you like, anyways, let's move forward. Uh, you know that uh, God knows there's a lot of comments on it. You know, we'll, we'll, we've got something to give away to you at the end of the show, so we'll do that and, uh, and announce a winner and a couple of cool things. Um, God, let's, uh, quick, quick philosophical thing. Can I grab a two oh, seconds? Sure. Um, I won't bore you with this very long, but when you mentioned Ollie earlier, mm -hmm. the reason Dave mentioned that is we were so touched by an email you got. The bottom line is whether you do this because you make a living, whether you do this because it's just something that you love, there are some people who are doing this under extreme duress, and it's amazing to watch their fortitude and their love for this craft and what they go through. So big shout out to us. From Ali, you know, Dave and I saw some emails and had some conversation today that literally we called each other and said, my God. It's so, a whole different level of dedication oh my in his God. country. Uh, you can be shot for doing this. Yeah. I mean, they, they come in and raid your house, and, and, and this kid's still doing it. His real name is not Ali, by the way. Because <laughs> we don't want to get into trouble. Yeah, we, um, we need every viewer. Absolutely. A um, couple other interesting things, just uh, interesting to us, and, and it's our way of thanking you. Um, and your support, you know, those likes and subscribing to us actually makes such a difference. I personally had conversations today with Ian Two Juice from Scotland. I, 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 too, yeah. I just loved his name. Me I was like, too. Me Ian too. Two Juice. Um, yeah. There's a guy named Nikili Berry. He is the cat that has to watch it with his fiance or his wife. Right. So, yeah. Nikili Berry from India. Uh, we've talked about Ali. Lucas Grant from Croatia. Wow. Uh, Leo is from Brazil. Fred Friedel from Germany. Uh, Daniel Barraquat. Now, that's a special one, and we'll get off this. He doesn't ever want me to end the show. So if I, <laughs> if I get out of the show at the end of this 50 minutes or hour in a different way, that's so Daniel is okay. So We need to give him Bill Kamek's email address, and when we're not on the air, they can just talk. They can be. I don't, I don't think Bill ever gets off the Internet. They can be faux Dave and Herb. <laughs> Yeah. And they just continue it from Thursday yeah. to Thursday. Anyways, yeah. enough of our ranting. Uh, you don't forget our chat room is banging. You guys are in there. And, you know, he's not the DJ. He's the CJ. And he's at the table with us today. Hey. It's a lot of rhymes. Drew. Point at him, Drew. MC Herb in the building. Point at your camera. <laughs> Dang. There you there go. go. There we go. <laughs> I'm new. Let's I'm get new. on to the good stuff. We got a cool ITL right there. Uh, well, uh, no. Okay, cool. It, but it's a good one. Let's move past that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you know, at some point in time, <clears throat> at some point in time, 
I can't please everybody. Mm -hmm. And so this idea, I want to just get an introduction to DSing. Mm -hmm. Nothing too heavy, just there's a lot of people out there that just don't understand it. I just wanted to, this is going to be an introduction. And then once we plant this introduction, uh, we'll go, we have the foundation to get into some deeper elements of DSing. So this is an introductory for the new guys. Cool. Let's roll it. Hey guys, good to see you back. Glad to have you. We're going to do um, um, primarily. I'm, 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 I want to reach the introductory level guys. You, you, you guys that have been doing this for 20 years, um, um, you might learn. You know, you might pick up a, a hint or two. But primarily today, primarily today is for the guys that are, uh, you know, just starting out to just learning about DSing. I'm not going to cover everything. I just want to give you an introduction to DSing, and then uh, we'll do a more in-depth um, kind of technical breakdown of what DSing is. But today I just want to get some guys started because I've been getting a lot of people asking me about DSing. So uh, I picked up a, uh, a section of a song here, and um, just pull up a a waves DSer, just a basic DSer. And this is this is the problem I'm having. To be a champion, the hard work comes from the heart. To be a champion, the hard work comes from the heart. To be a champion, the hard work comes from the heart. To be a champion. Okay, the word champion has a lot of energy in it. The the two and and up here at the front. To be a champion, the hard work comes from the heart. Comes has a little little comes could uh, the S on comes could probably ride. The two has a lot of energy, so. Let's pull up a, a, the Waves Renaissance, compre a Renaissance DSer now. <clears throat> it could be argued that basically a, a DSer is side chaining a compressor with the frequency that you want to remove. For now, let's just think of it that way. Technically, that's not exactly accurate, but for now, that's, that's good enough. So let's isolate the side chain and see what we're doing. To be a champion, the hard work comes from the to be a champion. Okay, so it sounds like we're right around the frequency of champion two. We're we're a little low and um, comes a little low. But let's see what that sounds like. To be a champion, the hard work comes from the to be a champion, the hard work comes from the. Okay, so you see a problem immediately. When we would DS2 and um, when we DS champions where we want it to be, two and comes are, are too much. So uh, we could automate it, we could do a lot of different things, but but this is a great DSer. This is probably the most widely used uh, DSer. It's uh, analog or digital. A lot of people that don't like digital like this DSer. Let's try something different. Let's try um, let's try Collins DSer. This is a um, this is the McDSP DSer. I, I kind of set it up so um, I I'm gonna take the range down a little bit. Let's let's uh, let's listen uh, to the side chain. Now what I what I did was I, I slipped the uh, the shelving in onto the side chain or the peak, so peak would give us this. Sounds a little low. That sounds like that's going to do it. Let's see what happens. That's not bad. Pretty impressive. Now there's another way to solve this problem, and that's by having uh, a little bit of control over the attack and release. So let's try the Massey. Do yes, sir. Come on, come on, come on. Now on the Massey, when you pull it up, it comes up like this. And a lot of people don't even know this little thing's in effect down here. So let's 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 listen to this. To be a champion, the hard work comes from the. To be a champion, the hard work comes from the. You see, you see, two and comes 
we get a lot of DSing, but on champion, we don't get a lot. Watch right here. To be a champion, the hard work comes from the heart. To be a champion, the hard work. Okay, so let's see what happens if we increase the uh, attack time. So let's, let's move that to fast and let's increase the speed. To be a champion, the hard work comes from the heart. To be a champion, the hard work comes from the heart. To be a champion, the hard work comes from the heart. Pretty cool. Now, if we want to listen to that, what we're doing, we just hold this button down. To be a Okay, let's, let's see if we can hear a difference. If I go back to the normal way. Yeah, so we're not taking as much of the word champion off the ch on champion. Now, uh, earlier we showed you how to draw them out with automation. That can be done. But um, let me show you one more thing. This is our old buddy C1SC. You know how much I love this plugin. Um, let's see. I'm going to start from scratch. I thought I had a setting, but I don't see one. To be a champion, the hard work comes from the To be a champion, the hard work comes from the To be a champion, the hard work comes from the Okay, I don't know if you can see the, a lot of people keep asking me about this. This is the Audio Control S8 3051. Let's, let, I'm going to show you right now. Right here, this, that little frequency right there, that's 10K. So this, uh, this that's what we're, that's on the side chain. Now let's, let's see what it is. In. So it looks like it's a little bit, a little bit broad, more broader than 10K. So we've got it set on 10K here. Uh, now we've got control over the attack and we've got control over the release. So, so if we do a real super fast attack time, a little slower release time, let's see what we get. Okay, let's, let's, let's lower the frequency a little. Okay, let's raise the amount on either side that... Uh, that we're messing with. Okay, uh, where's the cue? Here we go. Okay, so so this gives you a lot more control, a lot more options, and um, we can control the attack and release. Um, I'm not going to go through every single parameter. That's that's. I don't want to take take the fun away from you guys, but. Basically, that's our, our introduction to basic uh, DSing techniques. Uh, a lot of the guys, um, my good friend Jason Joshua, uh, will draw most of the S's out. Um, and I think I showed you on, uh, on earlier ITL how to do that. But next, next uh, I'm not sure if we'll do it next week, but very soon we'll do a more advanced uh, DSing technique. And remember, all of these parameters that I've done can be automated. So we could actually r reduce the threshold on champion. We could change the frequency slightly on champion. We've got access to putting a um, um, shelving on the EQ of the side chain peak and everything. So um, send me some information about what you want to hear next on DSing, and we'll take it to the next level. Back to you, Dave. <laughs> I think I screwed up. I think I, I think I meant to say the attack time on the Massey was uh, needed to be quicker. But anyway, I don't. I can't remember what I said. Dave Kutch in the house. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dave, uh, the uh, proprietor and uh, uh, king of the Mastering Palace yep. in New York. Yep. And check his website out. Dave's website's really cool. And um, Dave, man, glad to have you with us. Glad to be here. Thank yeah. You. Uh Dave's done uh, uh, um, John Legend, one of my favorite records, Yellow Wolf, mm -hmm. Lil Wayne, Outkast, all the good albums for them. Uh, he, he's done recently did a, a project for Maserati, uh, Gentleman Hall, um, Man Made uh, Machine, and Alicia Keys. Mm -hmm. Ali the interesting thing about your Alicia Keys record, I, Dave, man, come on! I thought 
I thought mastering engineers were supposed to be in this like pristine, most incredible monitoring environment ever. You just pack your stuff up and go over to Alicia's house and master the records. How do you do that? Put me at the beach in Hawaii and I'll master your house. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll make it work. Um, one, of my, one of my fortunate philosophies and things that have, have allowed me to do great things in this business was just say yes. You know, no is not an answer. Say yes, we'll figure it out and we'll make it happen. And oh, that attitude great. definitely came from working for Eddie Germano at the Hit Factory. It was, wow. you know, there was a nine master, uh, nine mixing rooms, and anything had happened at any time, and you had to make it happen, no matter what the artist wanted. So when Ann Mincelli, Alicia's engineer, and Alicia asked me to, if I'd be interested in moving my stuff out there, yes, we'll work it out. <laughs> we'll do it. let's just make it happen. And it was timing could not have been better because Sony Studios was shutting down which is where my room was located. Right. And I was literally purchasing all the gear at the time as they were closing. And Alicia and Ann had already asked me to master the album prior to that. And I let them know, I said, things are getting unpleasant here. It's just, it was a bad vibe. All the gear was starting to come out into the hallways. They were pulling apart some of the rooms. There was still time left. And Ann came up with the brilliant idea of doing it there. And I said, let's do it. So we shipped all my gear out. And I set up in her live room and just threw up a couple of gobos and we were at work. And there was so many benefits to working that way. Just in that there was four different ways I could listen to the music after I was done. You know, there was three or four different cars in the driveway and there was two more studios upstairs. So I could just walk around and listen to a variety of environments. And the other beauty of it was Manny would be upstairs mixing. Mm -hmm. So I could double check with him what I had just done uh -huh. and also with Alicia as well. Uh -huh. Or I can go and listen to, you know, man while he was working and, you know, we would sit. Basically what we ended up doing was I would do five or six songs and we would just go for dinner and listen in the car. And Manny would make notes on his mixing. I'd make notes on my mastering. And it would wow. be, right, can this be fixed in mastering or can it be fixed in mixing? And then go back to the studio, make the changes, keep going. Let me ask you this: Your 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 philosophies are are uh, uh, about the process of mastering or or refreshing to, uh, is the is the adjective that comes to mind. But how how do you listen? How do you, what are you listening for when you're trying to determine what you're going to do, and how does that process enable you to do it anywhere? Because I thought you had to have a perfect listening environment to understand what the flaws were and what the good things are. But your philosophy incorporates a method that allows you to, to work anywhere, essentially. Um, with mastering, I've always kind of had the, I always try to maintain the fact that at the end of the day, this has to go sound really good on people's computer speakers, on their small home systems, in their car. They don't have $20,000 live speakers, you know, large speakers in their, in their house. You know, it needs to sound great on smaller, more consumer home items. Uh -huh. And there, it's just, it's, it's really easy to do. I'll sit down. The first thing I do when I hear a song is, just like all of us, we're music fans. And the first thing I'll hear is a song in my head that I grew up on that I could have heard last week or mm -hmm. something that's in my head forever. Mm -hmm. And I'll go, ooh, this song is akin to that particular song. Mm -hmm. It needs to sound like that. The bass line is what made that song special from 1962, whether it be the Rolling Stones or Marvin Gaye. And it's like, this is, this is why this song is special. And this song, if that bass line is a little soft, I'll make sure I pull that bass line out in the mastering. If it's a hi-hat or a ride that should be bright and crisp, because it reminded me, again, something from my childhood or the past you know, few years, mm -hmm. I'll sure that element comes out in that song. It's, uh, it's really about being a music fan. That's, that's, that's incredible. Um, I think there's a lot that translates to my end of the audio world, too, from that philosophy. For sure. I, I was going to ask you, Dave, do you, um, when you talk about mixing and what consumers generally listen to, did the advent of a whole lot of people listening on computers and through earbuds, did that adjust? Did you have to make an adjustment in mastering for that? Only slightly. Um, what the adjustment I made was rather than listening to my large speakers more often, I'm listening to my smaller speakers more often. It's simple. Yeah. It's that simple. So this way, once I know it sounds great on those, mm -hmm. it'll sound great just about everywhere out there. Got it. Got it. Dave, um, there's a, um, 
I get a lot, a lot of questions about the low end, so I'm going to pass some of those on to you. When you're mastering, what are some of the, like you pull up, you pull up a mix and, and, you, and you hear the low end, you go, oh my God, this is going to be a long day. What, what, what advice can you give to, to up and coming engineers, um, mix engineers, in terms of, of manipulating the low end in such a way to hand it to you and have you take it to the next level? Is there any advice you've got for them? There is on the on the mixing side. Um, I've always said, for the mixing engineers, what separates the men from the boys are two things. One is their use of reverbs or space, rather than just frequencies in their mix, but also depth. You know, where it's there's a spatial thing, but you don't hear the reverb. Mm -hmm. And then bottom end, and the bottom end is separating your warm, yummy sub from 60 hertz down, and the punch of your kick. And the biggest thing I noticed is that, you know, only moderately experienced mixing engineers or unexperienced mixing engineers, kind of those two just blend into a big mush, mm -hmm. which become a little difficult for me to work with. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, there's, there's lots of tutorials from many mixing engineers that show how they deal with that, how they'll filter off, they'll use a low pass filter on a baseline and just kill up as much stuff as high as possible and then also make sure they filter the low, super low stuff off of their kick drums. So you get that perfect definition. I'm sure you've got a broad variety of ways that you tackle it in your mixes because you know, there's always a perfect definition of the two. You want that bass to hitch in the, tent, in the chest and you also want to feel it fill the room. You don't want to mush. Uh, for me, what I'll do is I'll do a combination of filtering and multiband compression in that range. That uh, multi Plugins and multiband compressors have helped me tremendously on salvaging uh, a mix that's got a sloppy bottom. Wow, that's cool. Is there? Do you have a favorite uh, multiband compressor that you use? T-Rex. Huh? The T-Rex multiband compressor in the T-Rex 3. Oh, really? Love it. Wow. Love it. Uh, yeah, years ago, somebody, Rich Keller had said, you know, try this compressor. Tell me if it sounds really good or if I'm just crazy. So obviously I listened to it. I said, well, Rich, you are crazy, but it does sound good. <laughs> Sounds like the comments I get about my mixes. No, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's one that I've noticed a lot of multiband compressors can get you in trouble really quick. Yeah, yeah. That one, you can avoid it, and it's got a, 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 an easy variety of ways to shape the overall tone. And it holds the bottom together without squashing the transients. It kind of actually gets a little bit more if you just hold it all together just right. It takes all that sloppy bottom and the 80 hertz, 90 hertz punch and kind of makes a pin out of it. Wow. So wow. now you've at least salvaged it a bit. Um, sometimes um, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by, by transients. Some people look at them as negative things. Bruce Wadeen looks at them as the most positive thing there is. Other guys look at them as a source of irritation. Um, give me your take on transients. Like, like I noticed that when you, um, well, I don't want to get ahead, but just uh, how, how do you approach transients and, and, and the manipulation in the, in, of them? I mean, are they bad things? Are they good things? Ah, oh, that's where, the, that's where the, the, joys, the joys of music are, where the impact of music is, mm -hmm. uh, is in transients. And for me, there's two frequencies where transients sit, where, you know, after just giving a stereo mix, I can either just bring them out a little bit. I can't create transients, but I can definitely salvage some that are there. Uh -huh. And for me, it's 80 hertz and 5K. And in those two frequencies, I can pull out that kick and make it hit you in the chest. And I can also then make that side stick or snare hit you in the face a little harder in that, you know, we're between 4 and 6K range. I usually always land at 5K on a GML digital compressor. Uh, where I can get a really aggressive 5K. So I love dynamics in my mix, or uh -huh. when I get mixes from mixing engineers, uh -huh. and I always try to maintain them uh, in the mastering process. Make it as loud as possible, make it as clear as possible, but also have it move and have feeling. You're, you're, you're one of the few cats that can actually make things loud as hell, but still maintain the integrity of what you were given. That's, that's, that's a real gift. One quick question, though. Like, when you're talking about the 5K and the 80, are, are you manipulating the attack times on a compressor? Are you attack and release? Or what, what is your, I, I don't want to, you know, obviously this could be a whole two-month course on transients, but just kind of get my head placed around how, how you think about manipulating them. Uh, in, 
in urban stuff, uh, hip hop and R&B, I've, and in recent years, I found uh, plug-in compressors to be much more effective at maintaining these transients. Uh -huh. uh, you can look ahead, and they're a lot smarter than your standard analog compressor. And you know, there's a broader variety that you can, broader variety of sounds you can get from them. You can flatten their transients, or you can leave them open and still bring in the lower volume material. Um, so usually it's a, fast, a slower attack time and a moderate release time, and you, it's a combination of those two. And again, you know, as, as you know, two different compressors at the same times will give you two different sounds. Yeah. The beauty of plug-in compressors, you can just sit there and go click, 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 click. <laughs> Ooh, that's the one. Yeah. That sound that I'm hearing in my head that I want to get to. And yeah, that, you, bring yeah. up a, you bring up an incredibly important point, um, the, the ability of a piece of equipment to look ahead and kind of anticipate what's coming. Now that can't. I guess you could do that in the analog world, but you might have to delay the tape or something. And anyway, but I, I digress. But the, that's, that is a plus for a lot of uh, the plugins. Uh, yes. Uh, in terms of um, um, the loudness wars, uh, I myself, I don't want to piss anybody off, but I'm not that mad at the loudness wars. I like things loud. What I do get upset with is when my mix changes too much. Now you have to, you know, at what what level of change is acceptable? I mean, in terms of, if, if like sometimes I my I, I work real hard to get a, a kick sound or a snare sound and, and and that gets pulverized and you know I spend an hour on both of those things. You know, what 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 what, what is, philosophically first? What's your uh, approach to loudness? I can do it. I can't, I can't destroy a guy's mix. I just can't do it. And I've been asked in the past by labels to do it. Mm -hmm. And I will say in the, when, when the loudness, no, was, loudness no, war was at its worst, mm -hmm. was in 02 to 04, 05, mm -hmm. I lost a lot of work. And yeah, that, was just, that was just plain distortion wars. <laughs> it was distortion wars. And I lost a lot of work, a lot of albums, because I refused to do it. I'm like, I can't do this. They're like, well, he did it louder. And then they would play it for me, and it was a mess. I said, I can't do this mess. So I lost a lot of work over it for a while, uh -huh. and now that seems to be all coming back. But um, you seem now to be able to do both. I'm sorry? You seem now to be able to do both. You seem to be able to make it loud without changing. I was able to do that then, but they wanted flat pancake and, and distortion. You know, like you said, those were the distortion years, uh -huh. uh, which I just couldn't do. And I'd say in the past five years, all those people that cared about the integrity of their mixes, uh, the A&Rs that have, you know, continued their careers, they don't want that anymore. Uh, they want loud. Look, loud is rock and roll. Loud is fun. Mm -hmm. That's great. But then there is a line that you cross where it's like louder, 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 louder. This sounds incredible. And then now you hit that line, and now it's just getting smaller. And once you go past that line, your mix really isn't loud anymore. It's actually really small. It's loud as hell, but there's no more impact, and it's tiny. Well, loud has no meaning unless you've got a reference, right? Exactly. So this is, you know, this is where this is where I stop, and that's, you know, and then, you know, this is the potential for the song. This is it. Any more, it's going to be a miserable tiny pancake. Um, hey, um, I got a question, Dave. The um, I'm always fascinated by the process. I find that mix engineers have a technical context that they have to live in and in a psychological context. And I'm wondering if the same thing is, is true when you're mastering. When you're mastering, are you, who are you hearing from? You're hearing from the artist, the manager, the A&R guy, label, the producer, the mix engineer, is it a combination of both? What's the process for our audience? Uh, we do have that same thing. I don't have six people sitting on my couch like the mixing engineer does, uh, commonly. Uh, throwing comments and it's um, unfortunately at the stage in my career I don't have too many comments from people where you can um, tell people to, to get the hell out of your room <laughs> yeah it's a, and, and I'm also I'd say I'm 85 90 percent unattended mm -hmm. and so the my first my first duty is to the song and then my second duty is to the mixing engineer you know, not to step on what I know he just spent 10 hours plus mm -hmm. on I mean, and then I destroy it in 10 minutes. You know, I avoid that at all costs. Mm. You know, he spent a ton of time on it with the artists, with the producers. So I know everybody's kind of signed off. If I just take that, 
bring it to a nice level where it, you know where it's rock and roll and it's loud, and then do any dashes and EQ to fix anything, or to bring it you know again hearing that sound in my head. Right. And that's it. Then I send it to everybody, and you know most of the time I get the positive <coughs> feedback. Every now and then you want they want a little bit more kick. Oh great! I wasn't sure there was a little more space. Here's a little more kick. Here's a little more side stick. And then we go on. So it's uh, it's a combination of the two, and it's uh, yeah, it's always a little dance that we do. <laughs> uh, absolutely, Dave. I've always I've always well I haven't always, but uh, in the last few years I've I've tried um, not to do all the heavy lifting with one piece of equipment. Like if I'm using a compressor, I, I try not to get the compressor to do everything I need, but to but to maybe use two or three different compressors. Uh, to get what I need. Like I might use one compressor. I, I have the advantage I can use it in a side chain or I can use it in a parallel mode or I, different ways. But what fascinated me, what fascinates me about you is that you're not afraid to use a plug-in. You're not afraid to use a 50,000 million trillion dollar compressor and sometimes you use them uh, uh, together. You, 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 you tend to like the, the plug-in, if I'm speaking correctly, as a way to get some of the heavy lifting out of the way before you hand it off to an analog compressor to get what you want from that. Uh, yep. uh, can you kind of uh, uh, elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. It's, uh, I'd say the plug-in does 50 to 60 percent, 65 percent of my compression work. That much? And that'll be, yeah, definitely, because wow. that'll be in Pro Tools, uh -huh. and Pro Tools is where everything starts. It gets played out, uh -huh. and where the rest comes where, you know, I could sit here and give uh, your viewers a bunch of tips of settings on plugins or what to get, but th that's only a fraction of the story. The other fraction is hitting my Prism D to A converters, going through my analog console, any possible additional EQ, whatever, mm -hmm. and then going back through the Prism A to D converters, hitting my TC6000, and then coming back out, and that's the final version. Even if I TC6, oh, the TC, that's not a reverb unit? No, it's a, they, well, they've got two versions of it. One is a mastering version, oh, and one is a reverb uh, oh, unit. Oh, okay. I, there's three uh, items on there. They're de -esser. I do my de in there. Oh, okay. And they have, uh, George Massenburg has his EQ as software in there, which sounds incredible uh, mm -hmm. for two particular frequencies, which, again, I mentioned before, 80 and 5K I use all the time. And then there's a gain output, and the TC has its own inherent compression architecture on its gain output. It's not much that I can control at all, actually, and it has a unique sound. So just after coming off of uh, a pro, you know, pro Tools, going through the console, having everything set up where that's the final volume where I want to print it, mm -hmm. there's a compression that holds everything together. Wow. And that alone is you know, the other 40, I'd say 40%, 45% of the sound. And uh, as far as not being afraid of using plugins, there have been times I've gotten live Albums, you know, sometimes live albums are uh, a travesty to work with. Whole unique beast. It's a totally unique beast, and there are times where all my tricks, you know, I can go through all my tricks, and it still sounds horrible. And I'll pull up either the T-Rex or another thing that's got they're all dozens of presets in it, uh -huh. and I'll just click, 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 click. Oh, that one sounds close. Hmm. Make a note. Click, click, click. Wow, that click. And then once I find one that's close go through the console and make any changes in the plugin that I think it needs. I mean this as a compliment, not an insult, so please take it as a compliment, but you, you kind of work like, like a mix engineer, but the last phase of the process, which is, and it was, you, you are the last phase, but you, you seem to think more like, like we think as opposed to think more like uh, classic mastering engineers think. I think that totally is a compliment, and I started off my career in tracking and mixing uh, at the Hit Factory, and the schedule that you guys do, I was like, I'm out of this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when I'm going home, I've been at that for a few years, and you know, after a few years of never knowing when you're going home, when you can have a girlfriend, when, you can, when you're going to eat, when you're going to sleep, uh, I was like, an opportunity shop popped up in mastering, so I jumped. So I come from that world, and I love visiting uh, the Manny Maraquins, the Jean-Marie Horvats, oh, Jean -Marie, the Tony Maserati, while these guys are working and learning how they get their sound, you know, because I'm working on their sound constantly, very often, 
and are like, ooh, how does he do that? So I love visiting him in the mixing studios when they're working and just looking over their shoulder and taking notes and asking him. And the great thing about it is after about, you know, four or five hours, I can leave. <laughs> that's, can, in, that's incredible. Uh, a quick question. What, um, on, your, on the Sunox um, website, you, you, you uh, talk about your use of their limiter and their super de and you give some presets, which I recommend everybody go check out. I did. I used one last night, and it's incredible. Um, in terms of the guy that, that is not quite ready to afford you yet, can you give him a little bit of advice on how to not become you in, in one paragraph, but, but what's, what's an approach that, that can be useful for the guy that, that can't you know, take it to a, a, a cat at your level already? Um, if you're working strictly in the box in Pro Tools, um, my, my, it's the simplest advice. It might sound like a cop-out, but Phil Ramone said this when I was 19, and, and I've repeated this a couple of times. Trust your ears. How does it sound? You know, don't look at the meters. Don't look at the screen. Don't look at the size of the waveform. Don't look at this. Close your eyes. I, sometimes, even when I'm mastering, I'll cover my eyes. You know, I don't want to look at the scope in front of me. I don't want to look at my view, view meters. Just close your eyes and just listen. And how does it sound? And that's the first thing. Like, start there. Um, there's so many plugins out there. There's so many things to try. Do I endorse a couple? Yes, I do. Could I, could I recommend those now? You, know, you mentioned the Sonox. Sure, but there's so many. that There's so many I can't even try them all that you can get a good sound out of. Um, I would focus on... You know, the Oxford limiter is great to getting a great limiting. You know, the mm -hmm. presets are on their website. The That's enhance great... button is incredible, too. The enhance button, is, it's a, it changes your bottom. And, you know, it kind of softens up your bottom, but the enhance thing can definitely, if you've got a slightly, um, if you have a dull mix or a dull-ish mix and just grabbing 5K or grabbing a 10K shelving kind of just makes it a little nasty. The enhance works well because it's a little bit more of a, uh, increasing or boosting harmonics or adding harmonics so it's a little bit more pleasant so the enhance works really well on that and the i like the eq in the t-rex eq it's kind of it's got an analogish sound to it it's not um digitally offensive for lack of a better word mm -hmm. and you know the 80 hertz is where you're going to get at a, at a you know medium-sized bell is where you'll get your kick and it's a great place to start there I, uh, i'm noticing that the the, your biggest friend at that point in the process is the bypass button. Like a lot of people will think they're killing the world, and then you hit the bypass button, and you're like, "Whoa, whoa, this that, this went the wrong direction." Are, are, do you do that? Do you hit the bypass button? Well, that's, a lot? that's phenomenal advice because there are times where I'm thinking it's sounding great, and then I hit bypass, and I listen to the original, and I go, "Ooh, that was horrible. Let's shut that off." Yeah. One, one other question. A lot of people, including myself, when I first started engineering, I thought you guys were like saviors. I mean, I, I, the, the prevailing philosophy when I started was they'll fix it in mastering. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It'll, it'll, mastering guys will fix it. Are, are we expecting too much from the process as a, as, a, as, a, as a group of people now? Like a lot of people come to me and they go, uh, Dave, where I need to, I need to get your mix mastered. And I'm like, why? It sounds pretty good. And they're like, yeah, but you know, we got to master it. I'm like, why? And, and do we are, are, do we have too much expectation from the mastering process, or not enough? Um, mixing engineers should have uh, you know you should have a healthy expectation of the mastering. I'm process. I'm talking about just the average guy now. Average guy should have a, a healthy. So so long as he did a good mix, he should have an, an average expectation. But he should also communicate what he's looking for, uh -huh. because at the end of the day, um, the gear that I have, the, the key difference between what's in a mixing studio and what's in a mastering studio is uh -huh. head. Everything I have here is extended headroom, and that's why I can get things louder before things distort. Then you can get out of Pro Tools. Uh, then you can get out of the standard toys in a mixing room. And I can uh, judge exactly where the line is going to be, where it's going to start distorting, where I could fit on a CD comfortably, plan everybody's things comfortably. Um, uh, mastering is also just a second opinion. It's, it's that final opinion. Like, well, I like you know, that. Yeah. You guys have been, you know, somebody's been so close to their song, whether he be the guy at home, mm -hmm. he's been working on this song, either writing it, recording it, and mixing it. 
there comes a point where you need a second opinion who's not been living with this thing for six months. Somebody who's got a completely unbiased opinion of your music or song. And, and we, we haven't used the dreaded, dreaded uh, L word yet, but uh, uh, what's your take on L2? I, I think it's one of the greatest inventions ever, but it, 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 it can be I misused, you know? Can be misused. I have one. It stays permanently at the end of my chain, right before it goes into my Sequoia editing system. You and I it's, both have the hardware version, too. We have the hardware version. Yeah. There's a huge difference between the two. Yeah. Um, I use it for two things. A, to bump down the overs. Uh, it works excellent in knocking down the overs. Explain and what overs are to people that aren't familiar with the digital world. Uh, overs have become kind of less relevant nowadays, but in the early days of digital, you were not allowed to go over this over over this uh, permanent, you know, or fixed quote unquote zero mm -hmm. uh, in the audio world. And it was literally just a little red dot and let you know how many overs you went. Uh, the L2 and many other either programs or hardware devices knock that over over so it can be produced at the plant. Now you can send a CD or a master to the plant that has over on it. They'll just knock it off and, and play. So it's become a bit of a non-issue, but I use it for that. And I will commonly have it at minus a half a dB. Uh, minus the output of a dB. You know, yep. That tiny bit, and it, for me, it always matters just to push the vocal, it just takes the center, and just give it that little extra push forward in your face uh, without affecting the bottom or, or softening the transients of the kick. Wow, that's good, that's, that's good stuff, good stuff. I, I, I'm ready to go try being a mastering engineer now. Well, well, Dave reminded me that we worked together 100 years ago with my buddy uh, Bruce Carbone, and uh, he was incredible then, and to, to, to catch back up now. Why don't we see if we can't uh, bring in some of our corner office folks and okay. see if Drew can pull in a few questions. We so Dave, questions. Yeah, so Dave, if you don't mind, we're going to get some questions answered or questions asked from, uh, from our online audience. Drew, have at it. Hey, Dave, how you doing? What's up, Drew? Uh, okay, I got a question from Kurt Geeter. Uh, is it possible to master in your home studio, or is it a must-go-to to mastering specialists for up-and-comers? Like I said, uh, you can do it at home. Uh, there are going to be limitations. You know, there is the headroom limitations. There is that sequence of events of gear that add an extra sound to it. Um, you know, you can go for it. Try it. See how it sounds. See if you get what you want. But the nice thing about the mastering, the mastering process is that second opinion. On your, on your songs, on your music, on your mixes. Right. And if you can find a local mastering engineer or, you know, somebody away from you, just you can speak to them on the phone or email and develop a relationship. A, a, a good relationship between a mixing engineer and a mastering engineer are, are very important. i tell you what, I'm going to chime in here and answer, answer part of the question. Too. What The last thing Dave said is probably the difference between the professional world and the non-professional world is... I, I, I have a relationship with about four or five mastering guys, and uh, that's the difference, man. You know, they know what I like. They, they, I know what they can, what they're capable of. Yeah, and that relationship, that relationship, Dave, is just so important, isn't it? I mean, like what what Dave and Manny do together is just, right. I mean, it's it's, right. it's like it's a relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I always say making a record is a team sport. Mixing is just one part of the team, mastering is one part of the team, production, the artist, it's, it's a, a great record isn't a one person job. What you got? Oh, uh, it's, yeah. I uh, got another question from Drew Kane. How do you balance artist taste and pressure from record companies re regarding dynamic range? Uh, I gotta say I don't experience that much. I'm very fortunate, you know, I, I did years ago and, you know, to say I failed at it was that I just, I couldn't make that loud distorted mess that they asked and they would use somebody else um, and that's changed now everybody comes and you know sends me their work because it's not loud and it's not a mess it's loud but it's not distorted and it's not flat it has dynamics and feelings so um, my group of clientele uh, doesn't want that and any new clients that come to me clearly don't want that because they're coming because they like all these various albums of artists that I did and how they sounded. So they get that sound and they don't get the loud. So I haven't had to battle that um, or I have a, you know, a back and forth with an artist for quite some time now. Hey Dave, um, 
Uh, we need one of those banners, Will, that says, breaking news, breaking news. I, I'm ready to declare the loudness wars are over. They've been fought. It's done. It's a non-issue anymore. I, I just really, don't see it as an issue anymore. It's, it, it has become almost a non-issue. It's faded dramatically over the yeah. past four years, yeah. It's like... Uh, it's like there's still some pockets of resistance to use a, a, a CNN term from the recent conflicts in the Middle East, but it, the war is done. I mean, it's gone. It really is. It's uh, thank God. Yeah, thank God. Can we talk about one more? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, from uh, Ludwig Diaz. Sorry if I said that wrong. Ludwig, yeah, I know him. Ludwig, yeah. I know. Do you, uh, you know him personally? No, no. <laughs> he, 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 he's one of our loyal listeners, yeah, viewers. Sure. What's up, Ludwig? Okay, uh, do you find yourself applying more EQs or, or more compression when mastering certain styles of music? Uh, it all depends on the mixing engineer. I've actually, compared to 10, 15 years ago, um, I'm actually using less EQ and less compression. It's really become about subtle dashes and tastes. Uh, when, you know, when I was working at Paris House of Sound yeah, and Pit yeah. Factory Mastering um, in, you know, the, in, on the bad boy days, the first thing you do would hear a song, push a 80 up 3 dB, push 10K up 4 dB, and you know, mid-range up a bit, and you know, you'd finally be getting there. Now, with engineers sending me mixes that are printed much higher in volume, in volume or in gain that have been printed on either DAT or half-inch, uh, and they're also compressing them to a certain degree on their own, now it's really become about uh, a gentle velvet hand touch to it. <laughs> the Velvet Hand. I like that. Right. That's a whole other show on oh, the Velvet Hand, right, Dave? <laughs> the, the Velvet Glove. The show is just about to go. Over Save us, Herb. Save us. I'll bring you back. Okay. You strapped on your baseball gear. That woke me up. Whoa. <laughs> Absolutely. So Dave, uh, Dave Pensado fancies himself a pitcher. So he's. You've heard about this batter's box thing where. He, he throws you heaters, and then you just knock them out of the park like we know you're going to. So uh, how's your arm? You warmed up? Mm. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and Dave, your, your bat's loose? You, loose and ready to go. All right, cool. So velvet glove to bat. We're, we're uh, covering all the great stuff. <laughs> hey, man, we're, we're going off to another place. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dave, I'm going I'm to throw these out to you. Uh, what's your favorite tool for flat-out repair work? <clears throat> Oxford Suppressor. Oxford compressor. So, no, the suppressor. Oh, the suppressor. That's Suppre basically a, a de-esser that you can use like, like I use C1SC. Yep. Um, 441 or 48K? 441. Really? Yep. Well, I got to come back to that. Uh, clock or no clock? Clock. Oh, I, I know why. I know why. Uh, would you prefer to, 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 to master a really crummy mix? Uh, wave file or a really great MP3 file? Ooh, good question. I'm going to refer to my own Phil Ramon quote. Close your eyes, how does it sound? <laughs> MP3 mix. I mean, you're not insulted when somebody sends you an MP3, are you? I'm not insulted, but it's not the best that they can have for themselves. I always try and make sure that they get me a WAV file. Gotcha. Fade or no fade, your preference to receive? Um, either or. Okay, does it matter? Doesn't matter. Um, the best plug in or gear for more? <laughs> hey. Um, you mentioned the TC, I guess that would qualify. Uh, the. Uh, for more. Ah, uh, old Neumann PEA EQ. Holy cow. Write that down, Drew. Um, the favorite amount of headroom that you like to receive a mix having, like, like, like we can ch chew up all the headroom with L2. What's your, what's your cutoff? I, I've given up. I've given up years ago on having a desired number of headroom that a mixing that a mixing engineer gives me. I, that's a, that's a battle I had to give up. It was like a person <laughs> saying, "Yeah, you know, just take the house and the cars." I give up. It's over. Um, <laughs> we had that fight a long time ago. So, anything that's not distorting. Okay. Um, some mixing, some mastering engineers like to add things like width and and things with with boxes. Is uh, you you prefer to do that or or not? Um, 
I prefer to do that, but I mean, look, you're the mixing engineer. You're the, you know, you're sitting there with the artist and the, and the producer, and your job is their vision. If their vision is is with and everything, then it's one less thing I have to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, that is something I do because I do work in uh, my one of my main EQs is a Prism Maslach, and I use it in MS, so I can EQ just the side to make it a little wider feeling uh, with the chorus. Dave, will you come back and discuss MS with us at some point? We ought to do a whole show on that because it's, it's, it's really getting popular and, and a lot of people don't understand it at some point. I'd love to have you back and talk about MS. Absolutely. Uh, one last thing, and this we've already answered it, but I, I'll toss it out. Um, Stones or Beatles? Beatles. Beatles, okay. Well, man, he did it. He did it. Cool, 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 cool. Round of applause for Dave Cook. Absolutely. Okay. Hey, Dave, I actually have a question before we let you go. Uh, one of the things that we're going to absolutely focus on, we've talked a lot about really from the beginning of the show, is making sure that we tap into the incredible community and not necessarily well-known community of female engineers. So we know Ann is one of the people we've talked about. You think she'd do the show? I'm not sure. Okay. Ann's very, Ann's very private. Okay. Yeah, it was a couple people, actually Maureen Droney from Neris. Had mentioned and so on and so forth, but we'll reach out for her. We know she, we know she's incredible. We've heard that her work is just insane. Is that correct? Well, one of the best in our business. Period. Yep. Yeah. One of the best ever in our business. Well, we'll reach out and see. It'd be great. It'd be a great inspiration for other female yeah, engineers. So, uh, there's a lot there's of a, great, yeah. There's yeah. A lot, so it's a great time to be able. I mean, uh, she's not just an engineer. She's a studio owner, album coordinator, studio designer, builder. I mean, we can run down the list. That's of, what I hear. Here she goes out and does live shows too with Alicia and so on and so forth. Yep. Yeah, Every exactly. Day. Well, listen, man, listen, it was certainly great for me to be reminded about when we worked together back in the day. Guy, I want to thank you for coming on. It was just fantastic. Yeah. Uh, that was a pleasure. Dave is, uh, I'm telling you what, write the name down, write the Mastering Palace down, because uh, Dave symbolizes everything that's good about mastering and the future of that particular profession. Absolutely. I'm telling you, I say that with total humility and, 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 and sincerity. And a great guy to boot. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. That's I, I, I called him late in the week, and he he uh, he accommodates. Dave, man, thank you so much for being on the show. You, Can't will, wait to talk to you again. Will you come back, Dave? Absolutely. This was a pleasure. Great, All man. Right, man. Thanks a lot. Good to see you. Hey, man. Dave, real quick, I want to see that speaker go up over your right shoulder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, there it is. <laughs> him and Eric Valentine, man, they got everything moving over there. <laughs> oh. Man, it's still it going. There it is. That's hot. <laughs> Those are your folk house back there. <laughs> it is. Uh, little things. Little things that are fun. That's there great. You. Thanks, man. Good to see you. Thanks, boss. Uh, right, Dave. Thank you so much, my friend. That was I'll great. call you. That was great. I'm, he's working on the dream. He's mastering the dream record that we're working on now. Oh, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Well, we know... Uh, we got a little giveaway to do. Let's do it. That's, that's, a, that's a lot of people's favorite part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> this is based on the comments, they sure are. The people are starting to fight over these, this Pro Tool 9 uh, giveaway. Let's talk about last week's winner. We, uh, it was Solaria, and they were nice enough to take a picture of their win and put it up. There's their picture. They just added a drummer in the band. That's his picture in the back on the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> Some brother. Uh, we're going to get his name and we'll get him back to you, but congratulations, <laughs> Solaria. <laughs> and uh, this week's Pro Tool winner. Shall we have a drum roll? Drew's drum roll, Dave's drum roll. Ne- neither have rhythm. Uh, <laughs> the I think he crossed a racial blind I, right I did. there. I, and I'm, I'm bringing it back. He's Hawaiian and I'm, I'm uh, Hispanic. And none of that adds up to <laughs> rhythm. <laughs> Tito Puente? Yeah, we'll yeah but you're not you. Tito. <laughs> <laughs> I got Dave and Drew. <laughs> so anyway, no the winner Kennedy. from... Jersey, South Jersey, is Jamie Evans. Hey. Jamie. There's their Twitter page. All right, Jamie, congratulations. Congratulations. So this will be on your way to you. Will, the magic producer, will get this stuff out. He's our guy. Jamie, congratulations. And uh, we'll keep going. You uh, know that you can go to our Facebook page to enter. Look, sometimes they change the conditions and so on and so forth. When they do that, Will will be right there in case you have trouble entering. So. So go there to make sure you enter for next week's giveaway. Um, got good stuff coming for you. We're, um, thank you for being there. Make sure that uh, you're liking us and sharing and all that kind of stuff. And it's another one. Yeah, one, one little reminder. Uh, I'm here again. I'm so proud of, uh, of uh, Pensada's Place uh, Facebook page. There's, there's no jerks. 
and people are helping other people. The, the dumbest questions don't get flamed. It's, it's really a great community for you guys to be a part of. And you guys that know a little more, I, I appreciate you helping us out because I, I can't answer every question. And uh, <laughs> her, her being silly over here. But um, there you go. <laughs> he, looks like a, he looks like a 70s porn star <laughs> trying to play a librarian. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I love you guys. You guys are great. And, uh, you know, uh, hit, up, hit up Dave on his Facebook page. Tell him uh, how much you learned. Don't ask him dumb questions because it looks bad on me. Thanks to all the schools who've been reaching out. We're getting to you. we got some good stuff coming, so yeah. we're getting to you. All right. Thanks, guys. Adios. See you.